Okay, here we have a tricky problem. We have 1 minus x over x minus 1, and this is equal to 1 over x. Now, I'm going to show you something interesting, something cool, and that is 1 minus x over x minus 1 is equal to negative 1. How do I know that? Well, the thing is, you can plug in any value for x. Let's just say 3. 1 minus 3, negative 2. 3 minus 1, 2. Negative 2 over 2, negative 1. It doesn't matter. So whenever you have essentially the form x minus y over y minus x, it doesn't matter what y is, it doesn't really matter what x is, as long as the denominator is not zero, this ends up giving you negative 1, which is great. Because now I can take this and just say negative 1 is equal to 1 over x. I solve for x and multiply x by both sides, I get negative x is equal to 1. x, therefore, is equal to negative 1. If that's the case, and column B is greater, which is negative one half. Column A is negative one. Now, I don't expect many people to know that. It's good if you know it and you can apply it, but if not, you're probably going to go a different direction, and you're going to cross multiply. Solve this out. You're going to multiply it. This times this again, cross multiplying, and that's going to give you x minus x squared. Then that's going to equal this. That is x minus one times one, which is simply x minus one. Now we can solve. And we can do so by subtracting x by both sides. That gets rid of x. That gives us negative x squared equal to negative 1. We can drop the negatives from both sides. So we get x squared is equal to 1. And so therefore, x is equal to 1 or negative 1. Now, this is where most people kind of get tricked. It's where GRE has its dirty tricks and you end up getting the answer wrong. So it's good to, that we've done it this way because now you'll also be aware of what this trick is. We think x can equal 1 and negative 1, but that's actually not the case. If you go back to the original problem, you can never have a 0 in the denominator. So there is no way that x can equal 0. And because you can have a 0 in the denominator, if, if x is equal to 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, x cannot equal 1. And therefore, 1 is gone, x has to equal negative 1, just as it originally was. And there, for the answer again, is 